Hello Sim Racers, welcome to another live stream and how are you doing tonight? Uh, here everything is great, tonight we, actually today we just released the Hotfix 1.7.6 of uh, Soto Corsa Competizione, uh, which is awesome and uh, the channel is growing day after day, the Discord server is almost 5000 users, which is mind blowing and uh, yeah life is good as they say so how are you going how are you doing chat i uh, hope you're all doing great except that here in italy we are all in red zone but you know that's life hopefully summer will come and more vaccines will go ahead so things will get better <laughs> all right so um okay so what are we going to do tonight tonight we're going to do a little bit of theory and a little bit of practice uh, and then later uh, tonight we're going to do some uh, community fundraise because as you know nowadays we have our own uh, uh, server so I will join it at some point and we will do uh, a race and I know that uh, the server is uh, on and the guys are uh, practicing at Imola uh, so let's uh, have a go at Imola tonight and uh, find out why you don't use the safe setup all right Okay, so uh, let's get into the game and uh, I will explain you why this strange clickbaitish title today and what I want to do with the safe setup and how it can help you to learn about setups and be more certain about your driving style. Okay, so let me go uh, and check the, the server and see if there are too many people because if there are too many people obviously it won't be easy to show you guys, so maybe we will stay offline for now. There are just 30 people. Okay, we can try this. I will try Imola. We will try first with the Ferrari. Then we will switch to the Mercedes and then maybe another car. Uh, we will do some fast changes and we will see what happens. So let's go in. Hey, Mika. Hi from North France. Dunkirk, wow. <laughs> All right, we are in. So, um, why don't you use a safe setup? So, you all know, I always said, okay, you want to go fast. The aggressive setup is already good enough, and then you can, you know, uh, start uh, improving on the aggressive setup. But tonight is about all you guys that you are, you know, arriving on, on the sim racing scene, on a Santa Cosa Competizione, you don't know exactly what to do. Uh, and maybe you feel that the aggressive setup is a little bit too aggressive and it is also for all you guys that the aggressive setup is fine but you would like to you know tweak things because it's fun to tweak things let's admit it uh, i know that i'm telling you you know the problem is not on the setup but it is fun to change the setup and feel different things that the car can do so it's all about you guys that you want to start tweaking but you don't know what to start, where to start from. You are tweaking the aggressive. You're getting results that you probably don't know if they are good enough. Uh, you are not certain of what you are doing, maybe, or if the car is getting better or worse. So how to understand, all right? So let me show you something first with the aggressive setup. OK, so let's get the aggressive setup. Uh, this is the setup, whatever, OK? And um, so, all right, so. Oh, the pasta qualified P1. Wow, amazing. With <laughs> the full aggressive, nonetheless. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, so let's get the aggressive setup, right? And uh, now what's the problem with the aggressive setup? There's no real problem. It's a pretty good um, uh, setup. And you can have fun. You can get really uh, fast. As uh, John Smith just said, Tortellini, you all know uh, the alien, uh, just qualifying qualified on the P1 for the British GT uh, official event using just the aggressive setup so yeah but what is the problem for us you know normal mortals you know the problem with the aggressive setup is that it's okay if you can handle it but when you're trying to ask a little bit extra uh, you might not realize if while you're driving the problem is you know between the steering wheel and the seat so if the problem is your driving style or if it is the car or if, or if it is your 
uh, your, the, the racing line you are getting and so on and so on. So I want to show you a little bit of this. So we are now driving the aggressive setup, all right? And uh, here's the situation. Now I'm breaking here. Oops. Oh, a little bit, a little bit too much. I went wide from oversteer. Why was that? Did I didn't do a proper braking? Or did I brake too late? Did I accelerate too too early here? It's always okay. What is the problem? You know, you still have to drive over the limit and slowly try to understand what actually is. Oh, you see there again some oversteer. Why that happened? Did I went aggressive on the on the curb? Was it my line? Was it my steering inputs? Was it my pedal inputs? What was the problem? Okay, it's. It's not always easy to understand why things are happening with the aggressive setup, all right? So again, here, you see, I had a bit of oversteer. I'm losing time. Why is this happening? Okay? So, Ryan is behind me. Hello, Ryan. <laughs> so, that is the, the situation with the aggressive setup. Now, of course, with a lot of practice, you know, you get better and better and better. And things obviously improve and so on. But again, you can never be, okay, wh why here am, am I losing time? Is it that I am too aggressive on the curbs? Is it that I am too aggressive on the steering inputs? Is it because uh, the, the setup doesn't suit me like that? You see, I'm, I'm having some issues. I don't know why those things are happening, all right? So why the car here goes straight and why on the lap before was oversteering? So something is wrong, okay? Is it my practice? Again, a lot of doubts, okay? Many, many doubts. Yellow flag in sector one. You see, before here, I went wide. Now I took it better and the car seemed stable. Why, all right? Whoop. Was it my line here? Or did I went uh, with my steering input way too much inside? Okay, so what? what is actually that is happening. Should I just continue to, whoa, to, uh, to practice and get better? Yes, of course you should, all right? But again, it doesn't, if you don't know exactly what is happening, it doesn't really give you an answer of what is going on, okay? Uh, you have many doubts. You're not really uh, able to understand what is the problem uh, and if the problem is you, if the problem is on the steering, if the problem is on the pedals, if the problem is on the line, why? So this is the main issue with the, with the aggressive setup. And of course you're going to need a lot of practice to start understanding how the car behaves and get better in the driving and then maybe start tweaking uh, the setup. But it's all going to be behind this big enormous cloud, all right? Okay. Um, Okay, why you should choose the safe setup and what that means for you, for your driving style and everything. Okay, so let's get the safe setup now. And number one that you need to do, fix the pressures. We all know that. So safe setup, as it is, we go out, we fix the pressures, and then we move from then on. Now, while you're doing that and uh, you're fixing the pressures, we can already start to understand something that the safe setup gives us. And that is pretty important. And we'll see that in a minute. Okay, let's get that out of the uh, of the pits. Hey, Tortellini arrived on the chat. Well done, mate. Well done. Well done. Congrats. All right, so let's go out, safe setup, and the only thing we want to do is fix the pressures, right? Whoa. Car on the right, clear on the right. So let's go and fix the pressures. Now, on the safe setup, you see the car goes wide, okay. 
So I just took the turn a little bit fast and the, and the car went wide into understeer. And you all know that, you know, uh, the safe setup sucks because it is always understeery, always slow, uh, nothing else happens. Well, now this is the great, great uh, secret of the safe setup. The safe setup takes out of the equation any doubts about if the problem was the curb, if the problem was the driving style, if the problem was the setup style, you know that the safe setup 90-99% of, of the time will just understeer. It's the setup. So knowing that, you can very easily understand that whatever happens is either because you braked way too late, okay, or you brake or you accelerated way too early, for example or you went way too much over the curb. But everything it does, it will always understeer. So the only thing you have to do on your driving is every time that you have understeer at the turn in, just brake five meters sooner, right? So every time you have understeer at the exit, accelerate a little bit, a little bit later. You see, it understeers. And there is no doubt why it does that. This is what the safe setup is supposed to do. So there is no doubt, is it, the, is it my driving style? Is it my... It's always your reference points at the end of the, of the day. There is no doubt about that. Here, go slow, accelerate later, and the car stays on the road. Yes, I know everybody gonna think, but I want to go faster. And if I do this, I'm gonna be slower. That's not important right now. What you want to know right now is, Okay, when is the correct moment to accelerate? When is the correct moment to brake before the turn, you know? And I won't have any other issues. There's no doubt. It will always do pretty much the same thing. All right. So this is really, really important for you because practically even, even over here, you see on the curbs, the wrong line, but still the setup was safe. So you take out of the equation any doubts about is it the car that doesn't suit me? Is it, I don't know, whatever. You always know it's my line and my reference point, always. Okay? So that is a great, great thing to know. Because at that point, you can start working on the setup and you can start working on your lines to make the car better. So it makes, so you, you can see actually, it's very clear. It makes no sense to brake later and later because you won't make the turn, okay? And you know that because it is, it is the car and nobody else, okay? So just brake earlier. That teaches you what to do with your, your, your driving line and your reference point. If you accelerate sooner, all right, uh, it will go again wide. So that teaches you once more to wait before accelerating. For example, if I go here, and go first gear, and I start accelerating, it just goes wide, you see? No, no other, no other ways, it's nothing you can, uh, uh, you, you can do, there's no doubt about that, okay? So this is what happens with the safe setup. Now, some cars might be more neutral than others, but generally, as I said, 90% of the time, the same setup, the safe setup would just go straight, and that's it. Okay? So, let us fix the, uh, the pressures. Look at that. Aqua, uh, sorry, um, Variante Alta, no problems. We just went over the curbs like crazy. Full throttle, we just had a tiny little bit of rotation at the exit and that was it actually. Very, very easy to control. Look at that here. You see? It goes wide. So I have to brake one meter earlier. All right, let's go and fix the pressures. Yep. Disqualified, of course. <laughs> so, is it, is it clear for you until now, guys? Is it clear the whole thing that I said about uh, the safe setup? Arun, I'm, I'm explaining. Just wait and, and watch. 
<laughs> come on, man. So, uh, let's fix the pressures. We need one PSI at least here higher, 26.7. And a little bit extra maybe, one, two, okay. And uh, six here at least, one, two, three, four, five, six. And another, ooh, more than one PSI here. 26.1 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 at least. <coughs> Sorry, and 7 here. Actually, no, 1. 26.1 and 1, 2, 3. Something like that. Okay, so the pressure should be correct. Okay? Um, Alright, so we have now fixed the pressures. Now, what to do? The first thing that you want to do with your safe setup, you want to go faster because obviously the safe setup is cool and everything, and it's easy, but it is a little bit slow and it understands everywhere and so on and so on. So just go into the arrow, okay? Um, the arrow already gives you an idea of what each car how its car prefers to be set up to be safe, okay? So you go into its car safe setup, you go into the arrow, and you see, for example, that uh, the Ferrari is very characteristic, that it needs a little bit of a negative rake, so the front end is higher than the rear end, and this is typical for the Ferrari. Uh, we won't change that for now, okay? So what we're gonna do is we are going to go down by three clicks everywhere, both front and rear, and we're gonna have a look also and see what is going to happen to do the front aero variation. Now again, I, rem I remind you, the front aero variation is not an absolute value of the aero balance, front and back, but it is, you have to keep it uh, in mind as the variation that occurs when you are changing the right height. So where the front balance moves from wherever it was before, we don't know where it is, uh, but it shows us where it moves back and forth. So right now is at a position that it is 2.2% uh, at the rear uh, from where it should be at 65 rear 60 front. Uh, let's go down by three. So one, two, three, and one, two, three. Okay, and nothing else, nothing else. So we just went down by three. As you see here, the Variation uh, shows us that the aero balance has moved a little bit to the front. I remind you, one millimeter right height difference at the front is usually two to three millimeters equal to two to three millimeters variation at the rear. So if I went down three here and three at the back, the aero balance couldn't stay at the same point, but it started moving towards forward. All right, so this is why this number became less negative because the aero balance has moved to the forward right now. We also went lower. By going lower, the diffuser and the splitter works better. And so we get even more downforce. And we also get less drag because they become more efficient. So right now by going three millimeters lower at the right head front and rear from the safe setup, don't do this in the aggressive, from the safe setup, okay, we gained both in maximum downforce and both in less aerodynamic drag. So the car should be faster and it should be also a little bit less understeery because, as I said, by going in equal measures front and rear, the balance moves slightly to the front, all right? So, Let's go back to, to the track and see how our car starts to behave now. <laughs> so as you see right now, it's really very easy. We just fixed the pressures and we went down both at the front and at the rear in equal measure, uh, three millimeters. Okay, so three clicks. Um, negative rake doesn't necessarily make you 
uh, faster on the straights. Depends on the car. Let's uh, heat up the tires now. Some understeer here at the turn in, but let's wait for the tires to heat up and get into correct temperature and pressure. Things are getting better. Pressures are coming up. Look at that car is already much, much uh, more neutral than before. And we did nothing practically. We just went down three clicks and fixed the pressures. That was it. The car is so much better. Hey, Tortellini! <laughs> Thanks, mate. Thank you so much. Thanks for the support, mate. And congrats again. No, you don't have to use only safe setup. Jesus. Some guys on the chat. So the pressures are pretty good, coming up very nicely. We are already in 44 flats with uh, full fuel and uh, safe setup with three clicks. Let's try to do another lap. Look at that, even, even by getting way too much aggressive over the kerbs, which is not so correct here, the car still reacts very, very well, very nicely. Look at this, I'm still down from a lap time by having to overtake cars, so... Sahin, thank you so much, mate. Really appreciate it. Car on the left. Clear on the left. Thanks, thanks mate, Th send everything you want. Send an email to Kunos, you never know. So we are already down to 43.6 by overtaking cars. 
with the actual the safe setup. I'm pretty sure we can go down to 42. Look at this setup here. We, we did nothing. Yellow flag in sector three. It's wonderful to drive. Now, okay, we like the setup. We could do an even extra couple of uh, clicks on the arrow. I would start to go down by one click at a time this time. And not three clicks, of course. Let's finish our lap. Look at that lap time going down. You see also how small movements I have to do on the steering wheel because the car still is very safe, very stable. Look at this lap time. 42.8 coming. Just like that. Full fuel load. Nothing strange, nothing 42.8, that's it. How about that? Okay. Safe setup, went down to three clicks on the on the arrow, nothing else, just the pressures. Okay. So let's go back to the to the setup. Now next steps. Okay. So already right now you know that to go faster you need to get lower, alright? And uh, you also still have a feeling of the car what is doing because you know already that the car before that was under steering and now it has become more neutral do you think that you need even less under steer instead of going down at the rear you can go one click at the front one click more at the front lower so you can see already by doing that 1.8 you go down and it becomes 1.6 or you could leave the um uh, the right head as it is and you could try one click less rear wing so you start gaining some top end speed if that is needed for the circuit car combo those are all, those are all small steps you can take all right that it will make your practice session interesting and it will give you the ability to start playing with the setup but without losing your targets because if you go directly on the aggressive setup and you don't know exactly what is going on with the car and you have many doubts, is it you, is it the car, is it the setup, is it whatever, right? Take the safe, do this. Only by doing the laps to make the pressures good and getting used to the car understanding everything. The moment you can stay on track while the car is understanding so much, you know what you have to do. Then you go down with the three clicks on the right head and you are already having a car that starts changing towards the correct direction that you want. Less understeer, more neutral and becoming also faster. After that, you want more top speed. Okay, one click, rear wing less. Two clicks, rear wing less. And you start uh, understanding what's going on. You don't want more top speed, fine. Go back with the rear wing and go down with the front right head. One click, two clicks. Try to understand what is happening, okay? So, uh, and you, you start doing that. Again, a couple of clicks, one click at a time. That's all you need. A couple of lap times, this is good. So let's go down on rear wing 10, l leave everything how it is, okay? And try something different now. So. We know that we have less rear wing, so we should be faster on the straights, okay, which is great. But we might have lost something on on the uh, on on the turns, uh, and certainly we will have more rotation because we will have less downforce at the rear and more downforce at the front. So let's let's see what happens, and we're gonna do something extra now. 
And this is gonna be very, very easy again. And right on target, practically. Alright, so. Out again. Now, I remind you, we have less rear wing. Car seems whoa, whoa, that was a <laughs> slap tank over there. Car seems uh, neutral and nice to me, so it doesn't seem as if the rear wing uh, made our car very oversteady. So that's good. Very nice. Yeah, very good. So no big uh, problems here. So let's bring the tires and the pressures up to the ideal range. Again, this obviously is going to be different from person to person. I feel safe enough with this kind of setup. You might go down two clicks on the rear wing and start having issues. No problem get back one click all right or you might go down one click on the rear and uh, still feeling under steering go down one click also on the front right head and so on all right so pressures start to rise up what can we do while we're driving to get faster well it's easy let's go down a click or two uh, on uh, on the traction control okay so the uh, traction control was at uh, five six let's go down to four four all right and see if we can gain time lap time because of course the less traction control you have and uh, the faster you accelerate obviously the car might start to become you know a little bit more oversteer at the exit but maybe that is exactly what we want and it's very easy to do because we can do it exactly while driving look at that already rotates on the accelerator It seems like I control it. Let's wait that city for car on the right. All right. Let's try to do a lap. Look at how I gained a bit at the exit. I was losing at the entrance, but I gained at the exit. Probably because my acceleration is better. Not this time, that was bad on me. Look at how it gains at the acceleration. Overdid it. A little bit too much over still there. Yellow flag 
You see how I gain on the straight line because I have less swing? Now the car now starts to be more uh, difficult to drive. You see, I had to do some make micro corrections. You see? So I might have to go one click back on the wing, for example. Because I don't seem to get any faster right now. But it's easy to understand why. You see? Wasn't able to stop the car properly. So it's, it's pretty clear, right? Uh, I did a change. And I don't seem to like it for at least for my level of practice. Maybe after you know a week of practice, I can go back again and 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 improve the setup even more while I'm doing so. So for me right now, it would make sense to go up one click on the rear wing, and maybe go down uh, on the electronics here two clicks and go back to to four like this. I could play with the brake bias while I'm driving. I could play with the uh, ABS while I'm driving. Sorry, that was like that. Okay. So I can do all that stuff. And it's really very easy and you don't lose your way starting from the safe setup. Okay. At some point, if you are, you know, becoming very accustomed to the car and to the truck, you can even go, you know, you can save this, you can go to your um, aggressive setup and see what's going on. And maybe, you know, do a comparison between the two and choose, you know, which, uh, which setup to, to use, for example. So you can do all that stuff. But what I wanted to show you today is that just with a couple of clicks, okay, you can instantly improve the safe setup, which is very easy to move around and helps you to learn the, the, the car and the truck better. And from then on, it's very easy to start, you know, moving towards one point or the other. At some point, maybe on some trucks, you can start, you know, playing with the, um, uh, with the mechanical grip and so on and so on. So, yeah, this is, this is how you can do it, right? So, is it clear for you guys? Uh, would you like me to try a different car and see how, how it compares uh, again here in, uh, in, uh, in Adimola? What do you think about that? Let's go, uh, let's exit and get a different car. So, as you saw, the Ferrari is particular. It likes to have more raised front end than, than rear in this track, at least. Um, what we can do, we can... Uh, the Huracan, all right, yeah. 720, the Porsche, the, I, I was, I was, you know, I was about to show you the, the, the Mercedes, the Evo. But if you want, I can get another one. Everybody asks for a different car. Come on, guys. <laughs> Everybody asks for a different car. All right, all right. So let's uh, let's get the Porsche that you think, guys, it's very difficult, which it is, especially at Imola. Okay, let's go in again and let's do the same exact thing, same exact thing. Now we know that the 911 is difficult, especially at Imola, it suffers, it doesn't have enough top speed, it is a difficult car. Safe setup, no problems. Go out, understand the, the car and understand the circuit and uh, try to find out uh, the correct pressures, alright? Okay, let's do that. It's, it's really hard, this car. We, do, we all know that. But I'm very confident we're going to be able to do it. All right, let's go. 
9,000 RPM, flat six, scream. <laughs> All right. Look at this. Understeer. When was the last time that you could do a fast left right with the Porsche and still not having the rear end wanting to overtake you? Look at that. Over the curb. No problems. Obviously it understeers. No big deal. Look at it. Understeer. Understeer. Okay. That means I have to be a bit slower. There is no doubt about it. It's not, it's not the car anymore. It's me. Look at this. Look how stable it is. Yes, the front end just washes out. So what? So what? Let's say this is a fixed setup and you can't do anything else, you know? Just deal with it and adjust your speed. There is no doubt that it is the car or it is, I don't know, the curb or it is... No. It's just your line and your reference points. That's all. Look at this. Amazing sta stability. I just went through Variante Alta like... Nothing, like there wasn't any curve. Bam, boom, that's what it. End of story. It's amazing. Again, I'm telling you, we're not doing that to tell you that the safe setup is better. It's not. But if you want to learn the track and learn to make setups, it's the best possible uh, uh, choice that you can do. Instead of, you know, jumping from one setup to another or dealing with the uh, twitchiness of the aggressive setup just take the safe setup do some laps fix the pressures look at this here in no problem it just washes out so you see I have to raise my foot it means that I went into the accelerator way too fast there's no doubt about that you see I understand so here I will go slower and wait. Wait, 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 wait. Go. Okay. I can deal with that. Again, here. Go in. Wait. Go. No more understeer. Why? Because I'm driving differently. No more understeer. I'm driving differently. But Iris, I want to push, I want to be faster, etc, etc. Let's leave that, let's just go Clear away. On the right. Clear on the right. Look at how the car goes over the curbs. No problem. Okay, I <laughs> overdid it sometimes. As I told you, 90% of the time <laughs> it will understeer, but I mean, you, can, uh, you can't ask for miracles if you are a dick, <laughs> mainly. Again, here. Stop, wait. Go, no problems. I went too wide because I want. I, I started breaking way too late. Okay, so it's the same exact situation right now. Yes, the car is not fast. Yes, but we don't care at this point. What we care is to understand how the car behaves into the track and adjust our own driving style to make the car do the correct trajectory. And that will help us also to learn the car better. All right, fine. Now that we know that the car understands so on, we go back to the setup and we do ex the exact same things that we did before. So let's fix the pressures. 27.1 here. Okay, point uh, three, okay. And uh, one and one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, 26.3. Right, and 26.3, and 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, so pressures should be good, aerial, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, I don't even have a look on how it is, what it, I, I don't care, I just go down by 3, and if I need, after a couple of laps, I will do, I will go down, but the next time I will go down by 2 or 1, okay, and move around there so you can see already that the Porsche works better with a positive rake so more lower front end than rear end every car is different okay so we did that let's go out 
and start having a look at how the car behaves. Ah, I went over the... Uh, I might have lost some... Some pressures. Okay, so let's see what happened to to our setup right now. I can already feel less understood than before. Definitely less understood than before. Change the hard. Why do I have to change the hard? What is the problem? The MFD, maybe I don't know. Anyway, let's uh, let's see what is going to happen now. Fight if it stopped near Maranello Imola. Pressures are coming up. Some understeer, less than before, but still some. A little bit. Not too much, but there is some understeer still. Yep. Some extra here. It's okay. bad here okay let's see if we can do a lap pressures are almost perfect we are already at 44.4 right. thank you Mercedes
Would be too late on the accelerator there. Okay, let's see what we've done this time. Four to three point six again. So, again, I we did the same exact lap time. So let's go back to the garage. I can already feel some understeer. Okay. So what I will do this time? I won't go down by three. I will go down by two. So one, two, one, two. That's it and I will do some extra laps. Now, this is very important. By doing that, as I told you before, you are doing very basic things and you still understand what is changing on your car. You see that the front aero variation moves to the front and you get less understeer and the car becomes more neutral, all right? And you will arrive at a point where if you keep on doing it do, and doing it or you go you know different way front and rear at some point you will start having issues okay you will arrive at a point where you're gonna have understeer or oversteer depending on what turn you are and one this is where things start to become more complex all right at that point okay it's really really very easy uh because honestly all you have to do is go to our Discord server, all right? And uh, just, you know, just go into the Setup Engineer bot. I hope you can see it on, uh, on the stream and start making questions. Just make questions. That's all you need to do, okay? So I don't know if you can, if you can see it, hopefully. Maybe not. Let's go just up like that. So you go to the setup engineer bot and you start asking questions for specific turns. And that should help you, you know, uh, find out. And by doing that, you also start to understand, okay, so if I do this, that is how the car changes. Which is different if you have a car that it's all around the place and you don't understand what the car is telling you, all right? Uh, so it's really, really different. Ryan, stop trolling the channel. <laughs> so it's different because this time here with the safe setup, you know what and how the car behaves when you are making changes. Okay. When, if you are get whatever setup out there, or if you start with the aggressive, but you are not up to the point to control the aggressive, you are doing changes and you might not understand what is going on. Okay. You have doubts. With the same setup, you have no doubts anymore. All right. And um, okay, so let let's go out and do a couple of laps more and see if we can uh, improve on that. Actually, let me show you also something extra. Yes, RDG, we do simulate all kinds of tire or type side wheel flex. try again now the car is lower so we obviously have to start you know being more careful at the curbs because Imola in particular is difficult it has those very high curbs so at some point you're gonna have issues if you keep on lowering lowering the car so you don't you don't want to overdo it but on other tracks you might as well go as low as minimum right height and still get benefits from that. Alright, 
let's do this. Car doesn't feel much difference, but let's wait for the uh, pressures to come up. Yeah, I still have some under here. That was my fault here. But, I mean, with all that faults, it's still I was faster. Now I'm starting to lose some. So we are doing another lap and since the car still feels pretty much the same again if you are feeling safe with the car and so on I think it's the great it's the best opportunity to start playing with traction control and brake bias so let's go down to three and maybe a little bit less uh, more brake bias to the rear and see how it feels and you can do all that while driving, so it's easy. You see, I'm still having some understeer here. It's all fixable from the safe setup. to overtake the GT4 and we're still on par in lap time. My bad. All my bad here. That was the rift of time. I could still use some extra rear brake balance. Now we're talking. Lots of time. And gain some time.
Here we are, 4 to 3.2. No practice, no real, you know, it's not like I'm focusing like crazy to do these lap times. S started from safe set out, I did five clicks, which are practically two sessions and the pressures and that's it. But again, the most important thing that I'm trying to explain you tonight is not that, oh yeah, you can be fast or not with the safe setup and so on, so on, so on. No. The most important thing here is that you are starting with a setup that you understand what it does and why. And it does always the same thing. And you, the more clicks you do, the more the setup moves to a faster and better version. And when it doesn't do that, it's easy for you to understand and say, oh, I'm not faster anymore, something is wrong, let's go back one step and try again. This is the key to tonight's live stream. It's that you know what is happening. It's different with the aggressive setup because you might not, or with whatever alien setup you have get or whatever other kind of setup you have yet that you, it's, the, the, any other setup that you get into is made to go fast with some driver that knows the trucks and knows the car, all right? And you go into this and you might not understand what is going on and it will take you tons and tons and tons of practice and fiddling while in the whole situation, the practice sessions you are going to do, you will always have doubts about what is going on, why things are happening the way they are happening. But if you try with the safe setup, you will always go in better and better and better, okay? And at the point that you're not getting better anymore, you know that something was off, so you just go one step behind and you get back to the setup that you like and you can try something different. This is the greatest difference from everything, okay? And for example, now I know that this setup right now was getting understeer and understeer and understeer yet, so I could go one extra right head down. I could do something here different, and so on and so on. Okay, and uh, yeah, so this is, this is how, how you, can, you can improve, in my opinion, uh, not only your driving style and how you fast you go, which is secondary. Well, yeah, it's, it's primary, all right, yeah, but I know that most of you guys want to go in here, start clicking, and feel the gratification that the clicks you do make sense and the car becomes more uh, good for you, for your driving style, right? This is the way. This is the way, all right? Take the safe setup, start with three clicks, and then move forward because you know what is happening. And that's all about it, okay? Is, is it all clear, guys? Do you have any questions I can answer that? Did you like it? <laughs> yeah, just me Tortellini can drive all his setup. I don't care about that. <laughs> this is tonight we are we're explaining different things. It's not here to we're not here to, to, to try other kind of setups. Okay, so Thomas Dura says, okay, what to look when the head hits the, the bottom limit? All right, so let's say you're not at Imola. Okay, you are at a very flat track, I don't know, Mizano or I don't know, Spa or whatever. Not Spa, probably not Spa because you have the Orus. Uh, you are at a very flat track, so you can go and go and go at some point. You hit here the minimum and you are very low here. Whatever you have done, wherever you have arrived, you are going to have a balance of the car, right? This is the trick here. You are moving towards a balance of the car. So if you have arrived here, <coughs> sorry, and you are at the limit, and the balance is still good for you, and you are getting faster and faster, what you can do? Well, you can try less rear wing, for example. Are you faster? Is the car better? Yes. Right. A little bit extra. Are you faster? Is the car better? Yes. Okay, no. All right, no. Well, one click less, okay? And let's go 
we are at the limit here, we know that it works, let's go to a different thing. So let's go to the mechanical grip, all right? So everything seems to, to work nicely. So let's try with the car a little bit less rigid, no? softer roll uh, uh, anti-roll bars. Is it better for you? Yes, okay, let's move one more click extra. Is it better for you? No, okay, let's go back, okay? So this is the, the whole situation here. This is the trick of the safe setup. If you do it on the aggressive, if you, if you get, let's save this just for a moment, uh, for whatever test here, I don't know, uh, X, okay. So let's save here. We, I didn't even, oh, okay, it, that was completely stupid because I was like, what, 28 and uh, I don't remember, anyway. Um, the, the trick is, if you go into the aggressive setup, all right, and here the car moves around, and sometimes at the same turn, one lap you have oversteer, the next lap you have understeer, the third lap you are sliding four wheels uh, outside, and the fourth lap you are doing it perfect. Here is the doubt. Is the car correct? Is it your driving? Is it your steering input? Is it the pedal input? What the fuck is going on? You don't know exactly. You need tons and tons and tons of practice until you start to understand the car. And if you are like any typical sim racer and like me, and you know, and you like to fiddle with the, with the setup, the moment you start tweaking the aggressive setup, you don't really know if you are improving or not. What I'm offering you here is a different path where you get the safe setup and you know that the safe setup will always do the same thing in all the turns. Whenever you try to go faster, it will 90% of the time understeer. And so every click you are doing, it makes it become better and better and better. And at the point that it's not better anymore, you go one click back and go to a different tab and you try something else. Okay, so you finished with the arrow, you are at the limit with the arrow, what to do? Let's go to the anti-roll bars. Try, is it better, is it worse? I don't know. Let's go to the wheel rate, is it better, is it worse? Let's go to the bump stop, is it better, is it worse? You have a clear path. You know what is happening every time you do something different. This is the different path that I'm offering you tonight instead of just, okay, get the aggressive, laps, 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 at some point, you know, after 200 laps, you are fast and maybe you start understanding what the click's doing. Okay? Uh, no, Marcus, you need to start always with tire pressures, always and end your work with tire pressures because once you have changed a little bit your setup the tire pressures might have changed a little bit and they might also change a little bit as you become faster and better so your driving style changes so they will get a little bit unbalanced so start with tire pressures and with tire pressures again for the fine tuning okay and i would go also if you find my playlist with how to do a setup i would go tire pressures aereo uh, bump stops, wheel rates, and then everything else. How do you know that you have reached the lowest right head? Well, it, you know, it doesn't go lower than 53 here. That's it. <laughs> now, if you mean how do you know if you have reached the lower right head in terms of efficiency, because it might be that, you know, uh, you are at 55, okay, and you go lower and the car is not good anymore. It happens because my, maybe the splitter stalls or maybe you jump over the curbs too much. It's easy again, because if you're doing what I'm telling you, you'll see that after a certain limit, you have issues to control the car and you are getting slower. If you're getting slower, the lap time and the gratification of the driving, so the car does whatever you want it to do, are your um, clues to understand if you're doing better or not. If you are at 57 and you have your best lap and everything works fine for you, and then you go down to 55 and you get slower and every time you try to go over the caps, the car jumps around, 
That's not good. Go back. 56 again. 57 again. And move to a different mechanical grip. Uh, electronics. Maybe leave the dampers for, for last, you know, because it's difficult. Here's how you do it. Uh, how can I handle... So, Korsolek says... How can I handle understeer at the later stage of the stint? Is there any magic setup wise trick to prevent that? Uh, or it is in the driver's hands? Uh, yeah, it's especially with the, with the Porsche, it's very difficult because the Porsche has the fuel tank at the front here. Let me see. Yeah. So the fuel tank is at the front. So you can understand that you start with 100 kilos at the front and at the end of the stint, you have something like 10 kilos at the front or maybe five. So the whole balance of the car goes bye-bye, and it is a compromise that you have to do. To do. Uh, you know, uh, you might start with a more oversteer setup at the start of the stint, so towards the end of the stint you have less understeer, or you know, you know, you could start with a perfect balanced uh, setup at the start of the stint, but at the end of the stint you're gonna have understeer, severe understeer. Uh, Voodoo, all the setups are made for 30 degrees ambient, 37 degrees uh, temperature, more or less. Maybe some setup had uh, an error and I oversaw it and I wasn't in the correct temperature, but usually this is how they are made. Um, it, it is soft because at Misano you do, you do have to jump over the curbs, so you need some extra, but you know, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't also try a stiffer setup, it might work. Yeah, um, GT3 drivers, they try to use as low traction control and ABS as possible, uh, but not rarely. I mean, again, it depends on the car. Uh, usually, all the traction controls and ABS levels in pretty much all the cars are made in a way that the driver is faster at level 2 or 3, for example. Uh, why is that? They always leave a possibility for whatever happens, who knows, you know, uh, you could go down for, I don't know, the, the car and the truck, for whatever reason, gains some extra grip. If it gains some extra grip, you could go down one more level, you know, and find some extra performance. So, usually, all the cars are around three to two level. And if for whatever magical reason, you know, uh, the planets are in the correct position and you find some extra grip and traction, you could even go down to one and gain some extra, uh, some extra performance from, from there. No, uh, Tim Boyle asks, uh, where do the mechanics adjust right here, uh, right hate on a GT3 car? Adjust the linkage or preload on suspensions? I will tell you what they told me. Preload is the evil, is Satan, is hell. You never touch preload. Ideally, you want to have always zero preload. Uh, the only thing that you have is the helpers, the helper springs, which we simulate, and those are getting, you know, compressed, and that is the preload, but you never ideally, yeah, there are some magicians that might use a little bit of preload, but usually they go for zero preload or as little preload as possible, and the, uh, they adjust the right height by moving the whole coil over up and down from the leakage and not uh, from, from the preloading. Um, all right, guys, it's, uh, it's 11, uh, 16. I guess we can change car and maybe start some practice and race with the community. Yeah. Did you like, did you like the tonight's uh, theory? <laughs> Whatever. Uh, Martin, uh, how do you know what ABS value you need to use for each track? Uh, if you can deal with the... Uh, Aggressive setup, usually it is at level 3, uh, start with that. If you 
feel that at every turn in you are understeering because you're locking too much, just raise it to four to five and see how it goes. If you can handle the uh, understeer and your turning is good, maybe you can go down one and go to two, something like that. 400 viewers, well, I guess you liked it, that's nice. Nice, I, I, I haven't uh, seen that we have, were up to 400 viewers, that looks pretty, pretty impressive. How much time I usually spend to do a setup? Oh, I don't know what to tell you because, you know, I'm working also on the physics of the car, so it's, it's all in there and it's weak, so I don't know. Hey, thank you, Richard. Thank you, Richard. Uh, Playman, check your documents folder. Uh, maybe something is uh, keeping uh, Assetto Corsa from, you know, checking your documents folder. Uh, or maybe you have OneDrive or similar uh, services enabled for the documents folder. And those try to update what is happening on the documents folder and take control uh, of the files inside the documents folder. And of course, on the files inside documents Assetto Corsa Competizione folder. And that means that Assetto Corsa Competizione cannot write uh, in, in the files, and that's why you probably cannot uh, see these things updating. <clears throat> well, we start making setups. The safe setups usually uh, for most of the cars are the setup that the manufacturer gives to the car and gives it to the client, which is, of course, a very safe setup. You know, it's not a setup that you will drive and instantly kill yourself. So usually the safe setup is what you're going to find, more or less, if you get uh, one of those cars for real, you know, and it comes from the manufacturer and it is set up like that. The aggressive setup, um, we try to make the aggressive setup as close as possible to the real setups that, you know, the uh, teams are using on, um, on the race or on qualifying uh, and for the ones that we don't know because obviously not all teams are giving us their setups we are trying to understand you know to do some reverse engineering we learn also okay that car has this kind of aggressive setup and it works in that way that other car we have the safe setup which differs from the other car in that way so possibly the aggressive setup is gonna do that we also know things about where uh, in what kind of ride heights you know, the cars are, are better, so we try to put the aggressive setup in such situ situation. Um. <laughs> Marinko. Yeah, it's legally safe, yeah. <laughs> uh we we got quite a bit of data for the F formula one 78s uh, from seto corsa because it was the older car uh we only got um, generic values for the downforce they will never give us you know the aero map the precise aero map for for a formula one car uh obviously and uh, and most importantly, um, Assetto Corsa 1 didn't have such an uh, advanced aerodynamic uh, simulation uh, as Assetto Corsa Competizione. It had the aerodynamic simulation that all the other simulate, simulators had at back at the age, so infinite wings, but not influencing one another. Uh, so it was also limited by that point. Mainly, yeah, that, 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 were, that was the, the limitation. Ah, same questions as usual. Right. How do you stop bottoming out on the roof? Or you raise the car or you make the car stiffer? David! Ciao, un po' che non ti vedo, sei, sei sempre quello, sì, immagino di sì. Come stai? All right, so, 
Um, let's choose a car. Go in. What should I get? I don't know. Let's choose the Mercedes as we said before. Nice car. Have a go. We have 40 minutes of practice. Uh, let's see what we can do. Hey, it's a how David, David Grego guys, David Grego, amazing alien. Uh, trust me, can, can I say David who you are actually? What your job? Let me know. I don't know if you gonna stay in cognito or not. I'll wait. Uh, Terence, the the whole idea is. If you are good enough, you can start with the aggressive, no problems. If you are not sure and you don't understand what the car is doing and you like and you want to tinker with the setups, start with the safe. It's easier and you will have more satisfaction uh, by doing that. So David Grego, guys, is actually uh, the, the guy that is doing the uh, input, uh, uh, the data input for Formula One simulator from Codemaster. And he's doing also all the, all the setups for all the Formula One cars and everything and everything. So great job on the Formula One uh, cars. Uh, hard job because I know that, you know, he, they are working into something that data are pretty much impossible to obtain. <laughs> so, yeah, ha hard job. So, well done anyway. All right, so, um, should I start with the safe setup again? <laughs> no, let's, let's start with the aggressive and see if we can do some fast lap times if I can do it because honestly I don't know uh, it's gonna it's gonna be probably to to twitchy for me right now who's that go away it's Tortellini of course <laughs> ah. <laughs> no, he's not Greek. I don't know if it's me or if it's Tortellini heavily lagging. Yeah, totally jiffing coming. <laughs> uh, it's said to be twitchy for me now. of over there but we still have to fix the fr uh, the pressure so ha ah, yeah it's in VR with 50 with 50 clients <laughs> Oh, 
Ah. Uh, quality race starts well in 15 minutes or something. Give me the, the time to do a couple of laps still slow. At least fix my my pressures at least. One megabyte RAM. <laughs> That's a nice username. <laughs> One megabyte RAM. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're having fun. The, the server, the Discord server is really, really fun nowadays. Some great people. And, uh, of course, as I said, also other times, uh, Lupo and Andy Moon have created this uh, server for us. It's always open, every day. And also gives me the opportunity to do a couple of uh, laps uh, uh, on, uh, on the Friday nights, which is always fun. Let's fix the pressures. I am racing top, that's your opinion. <laughs> no, that, that doesn't happen. A meno quattro convergenza. Uh, it's, uh, by the way, you cannot even put the toe at, at minus four. Maybe you're talking about camber, which is great. Camber, you need more camber. So first, understand what you're talking about. Uh, No, non fanno i temponi per quello. <ride> non fanno i temponi per quello. <ride> Se avete sempre questa idea che gli altri fanno i temponi perché trovano trucchi, ma non ce ne sono. All right, so, uh, pressures, always the same story. One, two, three. That's a little bit too much here. One, two. One, two, three, four, five. Ok. Hello, Santi. Uh, let me boot a little bit less here. It's a little bit too twitchy for me right now. Uh, okay, that's good. What should I do? I forgot what I wanted to do. Try again. Remind me, I want to first do something here. Let me put some laps, telemetry laps, and we'll talk about that later. All right. 
Oh boy, are we low and slow. Sì, sì, ok, resi top. Va bene così. Almeno quattro. Let's go. Haha, <laughs> Sartellini! <laughs> Not good, huh? Less break bias. I am racing. Ultimo avvertimento, eh? Stai esagerando, non sai di cosa parli. Ultimo avvertimento che sarai chiccato. Perché quando basta, basta. Ok? We can do a lap or two. <laughs> Troppo too much too much rear brake bias. <laughs> And also too much rear pressure. Oh yeah, but I was I was sliding around. Oh yes, I have to get into the, the voice sound, right? That would be nice to have some fun with the guys. Car 
you're on the left. <laughs> oh, the this is me, you must have us. Yellow flag, yellow flag, be What am I doing here every time? I suck big time. I'm ashamed of my of myself. Yeah, grazie David. Ah, thank you mate. Thank you so much. Maybe you can tell people to go to the qualifying so that we can move on. Let's stop here and ask to go to the qualifying. Uh, actually, let me go to the voice chat. Ooh, so many people. Look at that. Hello, guys. What's up? Hey, hey, uh, hey Aris. <laughs> so many people here. Hi, hi. Hello. <laughs> right. Just got to turn your stream down. Um, oh, yeah. I got to turn the, the sound <laughs> up. I'm hearing yeah, myself. We're streaming in the Discord group as well. So nice. anyone that's not rating can um, watch. I've, I mean, I'm going to do some heli cams and things while I'm here. Nice, I'm nice. Like, Thank I'll you so much. Driving tonight, so uh, I'll let everyone know it's qualifying shortly. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to, to tell session. you if you guys want, we can skip to qualifying. Yeah. Sorry to keep you waiting so, so much. I don't have yeah. any more Okay, water. yeah, we'll do it now then. All right. Yeah, let's do it. Ciao, ciao. There we go. Ciao, ciao. Red light, red light. Ciao, ciao. Hello. Have a good stream. Oh, thank you. Evening, yeah. guys. We've got some oh, more right. joiners tonight. We have we have got loads of people in chat. Nice. Absolutely loads. Yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, let's just oh. sort that out. But I have to admit, I didn't really know what I'm doing here right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. 
<laughs> that's right. typical. No, like, I, that's typical for us. Okay. I, we're all gonna die. <laughs> oh, I don't see any rain yet, so that's good. <laughs> yep. All right, let's go out. I will. I will get out from here. Oh, what the HUD's gone really small. <laughs> and uh, whoops. Right, ignore my stream for a minute, guys. It's uh, changed settings Crazy. now that the session's changed. Okay. Bit more info about 1.7.6 BOP. Well, cars that were too fast are a little bit slower, and cars that were too slow are a little bit faster. It's always trying, you know, to find the perfect balance and make the cars as close as possible to all tracks and all conditions. Thank you, mate. Thank you so much. Let's go. Commander's still there. Come on, Aris. Car on the right. Clear on the right. Okay, let's see the pressures. Ah, oh, pretty good. Usual, I suck in qualifying. Car on the left. Clear on the left. 
car on the left. Clear on the left. Slow car ahead. Nah, they're gonna overtake me a lot. I doubt I can do anything better than like, you know, 10th place or something like that tonight. traffic Very bad. All right, let's stop. Doesn't make any sense to follow all those people. Um, po -po 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 -po. bit extra here and let's see what we can do pressures are good I can try some extra turtle is the cab I don't know maybe all right let's go for another good lap and hope for the best Yeah, I can do 42s, but um, you know, as usual, qualifying. I'm, I'm, I'm bored of qualifying. I need to get up to my rhythm and uh, blah. Anyway, we'll see. I hate the track map. It's arcade. <laughs> no, nobody's perfect. Everybody has its own mental issues. I hate the track map. Okay, let's try and go full hardcore mode. There's a slow car ahead. Ah, bad, 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 no, no, bad, bad, bad.
left. Clear on the left. Let's go. Yellow flag ahead. Watch out. Good night, Wi-Fi tip. Slow car ahead. Thank you. Ha 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 ha! Oh, come on, Aris. Fuck. Damn. Ah. Idiot.
sector two. Anyway, a little bit of improvement here. Yep. Slow car ahead. Yellow flag on the charging front. I don't know if I can make it for another lap. But I'm slower anyway. Nah, slower. We lost it. Cool, cool. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. I'm satisfied. Let me see what lap time I did actually. Ooh. That's uh that's close here. Forty one point eight. Not bad. Hey, Yorgo! Nascala! Nascala! I have no water. Uh. Mm. Ah. No water. Uh, sorry, guys, I've lost a little bit of your. Um, uh, of your uh, messages. Uh, but, as usual, guys, I highly, highly recommend you to, you know, uh, join, join the Discord server. We have lots of fun, we have lots of spamming, we have lots of trolling. But, if you ask uh, either the community or myself, we do reply and we try always to help you guys. Uh, I cannot, uh, um, you know, I cannot help everybody in the chat. Uh, in during the live stream. It's not always easy for me. I'm trying, but it's not over, always easy um, But uh, yeah, no right now. I'm, I'm using the uh, Aggressive setup with a couple of clicks practically as I'm going <laughs> RDG <laughs> Uh, Ed Bargers wa says, what is the etiquette for if two slower cars are battling and being approached by a faster car and get blue flag? They continue battling. The fast car has to find a way. They will continue battling, but at the first occasion, I, I mean, you shouldn't, you know, push it to like one lap, one full lap or two full laps. So at the first occasion, you should let the other guy go away, the faster car. But, you know, if it is for two or three turns, just continue your battle. It's perfectly acceptable. That's the etiquette. That's how it should be. Again, first ask your legal organizer, your championship organizer, about what they want as rules uh, in their legal. Because it's, it also depends from one to another. So, 30 minute race. How much fuel? How much fuel? Yeah, I guess we have to go up high with this car. We are 3.2. Let's see if I have the, the time. Two minutes. Let's see if I have the time to uh, understand. So. Pa -pa 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 -pa. Fuel estimator. 30 minutes race. Uh, where is lap time? 141, 143. Uh, 3.3. 60. Yeah, let's go up to 65. This car is, is consuming fuel like no tomorrow.
And I'm fourth. Yeah. But it's okay. I mean, we have uh, Healy at first and uh, Renoir. Four tenths. I can take it. Fine by me. Alfredo is here. It's Alfredo. Manu is here. No, Manu, he didn't come. Because I was expecting uh, Manuel Darin, our developer, to be here, but I cannot see him. Oh, here he is. Oh, yeah. No, first, with the GT4. Wall down, Manu. Great stuff. That's how you do it. Oh yeah, Dark Eagle. Of course, it have uh, it has consequence of the tire temperature. All right. So here we are. Let me try. We saved it. Let's save this uh, setup. Uh, whatever, uh, another X here, and then we will save it. So maybe you guys want to try it. Twenty-one, twenty-one race. Oops, what's that? <laughs> Alfredo, <laughs> Alfredo is using the safe setup and he's fast on the aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> What car? The Bentley. Nice, nice. Ah. Thirty seconds. So thirty minutes of race. It's gonna be difficult. Twenty seconds. Twenty seconds. All right. Let's go. Let's go, starting from fourth place. Let's do it. Full hardcore mode. Yeah, let's do it. Stay in double Ah, Tortellini! Come on, get get off! <laughs> He's stupid. He's so stupid. All right, guys, time to pure driving. Let's go! Car on the left. Clear on the left. Car on the left. Clear on the left. Alright, third position. And we're safe. Go, go, go! Don't know what happened behind me. Hope everything went nice and fine. Ah, I've lost the apex over there. Yellow flag is go! Tires, 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 full tires. Yeah. Ah. Car on the left. Clear on the left. Car. 
Come on, Torque. Come on, V8. Let's go away from that uh, McLaren. <laughs> Save me, please. Oh my god. Alright, tires are coming up. the ground the car is heavy the car is heavy yeah I need to take this into consideration oh it's so heavy oh come on second time here it's so heavy oh I cannot stop the car fuck I cannot stop the car. Come on, Aris. Ah, that was all on me. Car on the right. Clear on the right. All right, that was all on me. It was Alfredo that punked me, but it wasn't his fault, it was my fault. So he should have, you know, just moved away and move on. Alright, let's see what we can do. Oh, finally. We're down to eighth position. The pressures are all around the place. <laughs> yeah, always the default. Yellow flag is acceptable. There's a little bit of nervousism in the chat.
All right, let's get that Lexus. Try to focus a little bit. Strange there. Hmm. Love some extra grip up front, but but the tires are low in pressure at, at the front. Come on. Seriously. Not made the front end grip. And I'm first. Car on the left. Clear on the left. Nice, Alfredo. Fred al dente. <laughs> and dehydrated. <laughs> oh, so we cut the GT Force, I think. It's gonna be interesting. Oh man! 
man, sorry. Oh, damn. Sorry about that. Who was that? Ah. Uh, was expecting me to close over there. Oh, well. Not such a good race tonight. You can't have everything. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Oh, come on, car. Pressures are getting lower and lower. Ryan is out.
slow car, but... Car on the left. Clear on the left. Come on, car! Guys, I just I just punted just one car in my life. <laughs> Shit happens. <laughs> Alpha, you're sort of, you're sort of right. <laughs> I don't have drink, I don't have anything. The water is finished. I'm dying here. Okay, please, sorry, mate. I'm so sorry. There's a complete Error of judgment. Car on the left. Clear on the left. I owe you one. <laughs> I just went straight. <laughs> what are you doing, mate? <laughs> Hello? Oops, what happened? <laughs> what are you doing?
Less than five minutes to go. I also have damage, that's why. That's why. <laughs> but like, wait, why, why? Well, well, I have damage. Makes sense now. Didn't even thought of damage. Better this way, just drive. Problem with the with the Lexus over there.
that Lexus behind me might want to get back to seventh place. Yep, it's coming for me. <laughs> Someone who's out of fuel. <laughs> no need to go outside of the road, mate. <laughs> it's okay. All right. Pretty terrible race, but okay. Sorry for the accident. But, you know, all in all, it wasn't that bad. Nice, nice. Also, I enjoyed the full hardcore mode. Pretty nice. I have to do this more often. It's pretty nice, pretty nice. I like that. I like that. Okay, so... That was for, for tonight. Uh... Nice first part of uh, of theory, and afterwards we did this fun community race. Uh, congrats to Tortellini who won, of course, and uh, Heli, Babin, and uh, that that made the podium. Alfredo, Vitalini in front of me, everybody. Well done, guys. Let me check the GT4 cars. Manuel Darin wins the GT4 race. Uh, Massara is second and Pereira is third for the podium of the GT4 cars. Well done, guys. Great, great stuff. Nice. Oh, we love that banana here. <laughs> very, very nice. Excellent. Okay, cool. Um, one last thing. So, as you know, guys, um, we have this amazing uh, Discord community and everything, right? Uh, the server is getting better and better and better and you all know by now uh, the um, engineering bot that you can see here for example uh, you just have to you know ask a question to the engineer bot here on the pin messages as usual you can find uh, uh, the questions you can ask the engineering bot to help you make a setup uh, you can go here on the channel ask the bot and again, on the pin messages, you can find that you can uh, ask help and get this list of commands for everything you need. And now we have something new. We have something new into usually into the replays and telemetry channel, but you can ask everywhere. So uh, if you ask Motec, right, like this, you get some information which is great. And what that information says, that our user and friend Askaroth with contributors, because it is an open source uh, um, program and uh, web application, uh, he, ha create, he has created this very, very nice uh, server database of um, MOTEC files. So if you guys want to have a MOTEC file to study with your labs, uh, you can come here and you can download whatever you want. We have the MOTEC file and then the LDX uh, download. You can just choose the uh, Barcelona, the uh, track and the car. And, uh, you know, you can see the lap times and everything. And, of course, you can also create your own uh, 
uh, you, you can also contribute with your own uh, MOTEC files. So all you have to do here is zip your MOTEC folder, all right? So let me do that. So you, we go into the documents, competizione, MOTEC over here. We just gonna go and zip, uh, maybe I need to do this like that. So let me zip all this. Uh, yeah, good old WinRAR. Zip all that, okay. And then go in here and uh, where am I? In documents, once again, set the course, uh, MOTEC and start uploading so we upload all of that and automatically the labs that we did tonight are going to be uh, positioned inside the server okay so let's have a look let's uh, see if we can find Imola Imola here we are Imola maybe not yet I don't know exactly how much time it needs to to update everything so it might need some time it's not here yet, so we'll see. But, you know, this is how you do it. If you also want to contribute and make the program even better, everything is at GitHub for you developers out there. You can get the whole backend, frontend, and everything and start, you know, contributing. So, once again, thanks to Ascaros and all the contributors that they are working on that. Uh, we are getting more and more and more uh, people contributing, and you can find more tech labs. Uh, for your own use, for whatever reason. Uh, CC Driver tells me that we have a guest in the chat. Let's see who this is. Uh, who is it? I cannot find it. Niels is here. Niels Helsingfeld. Did I pronounce it correct? Sorry, mate. You might know Niels, a great physics programmer, uh, worked a lot of, uh, on Automobilista 1, some work I think also in uh, Automobilista 2, also worked in Air Factor 1. And uh, most importantly, he creates some amazing peripherals, some top professional uh, pedals. Uh, so absolutely, he also uh, has a YouTube channel which, which he is creating some uh, fantastic uh, uh, YouTube uh, videos. So go there, you know, subscribe to his uh, channel, learn all about it, and of course, you know, buy his own pedals. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, great. <laughs> all right, so. Um, that's it for tonight. I think the guys are going to do another uh, race or something like that. Maybe. They are in qualifying. They are already in qualifying. Uh, so let me have a look here what they are doing. Already outside. Some of them are going for a drive. So once again, if you, if you like the races, join our, uh, our Discord server. You will find plenty of help. Uh, another great thing I would like to show you on the uh, Discord server is that if you're new and you're searching a legal or a championship, we have this fantastic legal and, uh, and uh, communities uh, uh, channel. Uh, tons and tons and tons and tons of communities and legals posted here by their uh, administrators, by uh, their um, users, by everybody. You can see so many communities. It, I mean, really, just get in here, pick one, go there and have fun with uh, proper, you know, racing, not the stupid things and fun things we are doing uh, every Friday night or every, every night. Uh, so, so many people, so thank you to all the contributors that they are posting their communities here. It's really, really important for the people to find, uh, for the sim races to be able to find uh, uh, all, I mean, there are so many, so many races, so many, uh, everything, for any level, for any kind of cars, for any kind, look at that. Amazing how much there is in here. So. If you are wondering, okay, you don't like our community because we are too much spamming and whatever, uh, get in there, find something more serious, go there and join, or even, you know, something more fun. 
Uh, all right, so thank you again. As usual, in the following days, I will cut uh, uh, shorter versions uh, and edits of this long live stream. And uh, yeah, mm, next week it's going to be Bathurst uh, practice again because on the next, uh, on the end of the month, we have the 12 hours of Bathurst on the BMW. So, all right, so thank you again and uh, see you soon. Goodbye. Where is the button? I cannot find the button. Every time I cannot find the button. Yes.